Congratulations. You are now the proud owner of Project Zomboid. Your hands are shaking with glee as you open up the game and quickly scan the main menu, completely bypassing the in-game tutorial much like any terms of service agreement you have ever accepted. You spam that new game button and pick one of the presets available because the amount of options in Custom Sandbox could feed a small village. This is it. You're in. This is the exact moment where Project Zomboid first warns you of what's to come. It does this with a simple catchphrase. This is how you died. Unfazed by this warning, you embark on your new journey. Today is a new day, you say. The sun is up and it's warm outside. You open the door of your domicile and are immediately reminded of the phrase you had just heard 30 seconds prior. You close the game in frustration, but that's okay. Now you're here. I can help. If you stick around, you might just learn something useful. Before you get started on your journey, you should know that one of the first decisions that Zomboid gives you, your spawn location, could dramatically change your gameplay experience. Of the four options presented in front of you, Rosewood and Riverside are both fairly scarcely populated by zombies. Rosewood has the advantage of a large police station and generally more points of interest, while Riverside has... a river. Maljo is the middle-of-the-road choice if you're looking for a more balanced start, and is the original location that the game started in. And finally, West Point. It's an absolute cesspit of the undead, avoid at all costs. Now that that's out of the way, we can begin. The next screen you are presented with is the Occupations and Traits screen. Here we could go into extreme depth, min-maxing the ultimate champion, but in the end, I feel the best way to play the game is to use the traits to tell a story. And that story is... what your character was prior to the apocalypse. That being said, if you are one to min-max, don't miss out on the little save button at the bottom. This allows you to save your absolute masterpiece of a character. You know, just in case it dies, for some unknown reason. It's time to embark on an adventure the likes of which have never been seen before. You have already witnessed the horrors of Zomboid firsthand, and this time, you are prepared. My first tip is a simple one. Press C. Congrats. Now you are sneaking, and the chance of you attracting a nearby zombie with your giant hobbit feet are greatly reduced. Next, I want you to quickly take in your surroundings, and keep an eye out for a few key items. First, a water bottle for drinking. Also another quick tip, if you keep a full water bottle in your inventory, your character will automatically drink from it until it is empty. 2. Enough food to survive for a day or two. Key term here is survive, not thrive. 3. A can opener, for freeing only the most delectable morsels from their iron cages. 4. A weapon, you know, to use as a weapon. 5. Last but not least, a few pieces of loose clothes. These clothes should then be ripped up into sheets for later use as improvised bandages. At this point, if you've gotten lucky enough to collect all of these items, congratulations. However, if you haven't, fret not. There are many more houses throughout the world of Zomboid waiting for you to break in and pillage for all they are worth. While out pillaging the local neighborhood for its loot, you may run into a zombie. But do not panic. Calmly approach the situation, and for the love of God, the last thing you want to do is run. The sound of your feet slapping the pavement at Mach 6 is like ringing a dinner bell for the zombies. Suddenly you will find yourself dealing with much more than just one or two. Which leads me into my next tip. Use sound to your advantage. Zombies really like noise and will be attracted to it. Pressing Q will make your character yell, just make sure you have a clean getaway route planned before screaming at the top of your lungs. This can be a great way to find out if a building is occupied. Yelling out in front of the building will quickly tell you if there are zombies inside. Observe. Another great tip is use common sense. Want to break a window? Use a weapon, or this will happen. Want to go through a broken window? Better clear the glass out first. Just make sure you're wearing gloves when you do. Do not, and I repeat, do not walk on glass with no shoes on. Also, please do not eat glass. It's bad for your throat lining. I could go on and on with the little things like this, but it would take hours. Like I said, just use common sense. Why are all these tips related to glass, you might be asking? Don't worry about it. It's not your problem. Well, you've made it this far, and I'm happy for you. 
That being said, this is by far the most important tip, and it's also my last. None of what I have just said matters, because much like any sane human being, you have installed so many mods that your zombie folder is taking up more hard drive space than all of your other Steam games combined. The zombies are now furries, all of your items are renamed after famous movie stars, every cabinet is filled to the brim with anime figurines, and somehow you wound up in a high-stakes poker match. I can't help you. No one can. But at least you're having fun. supposed to be like this. <laughs>